If you clicked on this video, you may be wondering, how does 1 degree equal 60 nautical miles? Well, sit back, let me explain it to you. Hey, Plateau dear. Well, today I'm going to explain to you guys how we get 1 degree equals 60 nautical miles. The misconception here is usually from the globe defenders that 1 degree is 60 nautical miles because of the earth curve of the floor. But that is simply not true, even though that's the push narrative. I'm going to try and explain it to you today how it's actually for a flat earth and not for a globe earth. I hope you sit through the whole presentation and take part with me as I'm going to ask you some questions and see if you can answer it. Okay, 1 degree per 60 nautical miles. How do we get that? Well, it's very simple. Let's start off with a circle. You simply, a circle has a circumference. You see the circumference right around here and you have that's in this place the sun or a star it's at a boundary of that circle in other words it's sitting at the circumference if we move it around you see it's just moving around on the circumference at different different locations it doesn't matter it still sits at the boundary so we get what we call an x vector x latitude and a y this is because it has a linear function you have your center, which is the center of the circumference circle, and you have the x-axis and you have your y-axis because it has a linear function. Let's, for instance, take a 45 degree angle. Where does this 45 degree angle come from? Simply, it's taken from the vertex in the center of that circumference. So in other words, it sits on the 180 degree plane, which is horizontal. If you have to take this with uh, celestial navigation, it's simply going to be based on the elevation angle. So it will be zenith, the z x axis, to your zero degree, which is the y, which creates your elevation angle. So you're going to be measuring a co altitude angle there, and you're going to have your elevation angle there towards the luminary. This is the relationship with the linear functions. You have on the x, you have its graph. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be x5 and it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, xy. So in other words, it's going to give the linear function. So it's going to be the altitude and the distance based on the angle in the circumference. So if we go to 25, you see how this changed. It's got a different distance to different altitude relationship. This is simply the distance. This is simply the altitude. Now remember, this is all based on a 90 degree angle, which sits on a zero, on a 180 degree plane. Okay, now we have the two, the 45 degree and the 25 degree. Which one is the greater distance? If you don't know, maybe just pause this video and come back in five seconds and try Let's see if you get the answer right. Did you get it right? Let's see. Yes, this is the greater distance. Why? Because the relationship shows the distance would be greater because it's moved along the arc. So it's going further away from the observer at the vertex. So the altitude would be less, but the distance away from the observer will be more. Okay, now which one has the highest altitude? Pause the video if you haven't really figured it out. Have you figured it out? Let's check. Correct, it's this one. It's simply because you see it's got, it's going to have a higher altitude based on the graph because it has a distance closer to the observer. So it's also following that arc. The relationship on that arc determines the altitude relationship to the distance relationship and that is simply how the linear function works to the x and the y okay so now we have the x and y set up on the graph we know that the 80 degree is going to be higher altitude with less distance 60 degree a bit lower altitude with more distance 40 degree even more distance with lower altitude and so on to 20 degrees and then yeah that's just the distance 
and the altitude. So we're going to keep the notations with x as the zenith, which is the altitude, and that's obviously the 90 degree, and we're going to keep with the y, which would be the zero degree or the 180 degree line, which is the horizontal plane. So that would be your elevation angle. Here we have Mike again. Thank you, Mike, for joining us. Okay, Mike is going to take an observation. First we have to know is Mike is standing on a horizontal plane. This would be your elevation angle. So it's zero degrees, zero degrees, but it makes 180 is a straight line. So in front of him and behind him is a horizontal plane that makes 180 degrees, but the deck is a zero degree deck. The 90 degree is his zenith. In other words, he's standing on a 90 degree perpendicular to the horizontal. He's obviously got his 360 degree circumference around him, which is part of his field of view bubble. As you can see, he's got that arc around him. And it's also obviously because we live in a three dimensional world, not a two dimensional world. He's also going to have a 360 view around him. So you can always say it's like a dome, just a personal uh, field of view bubble. Now he's standing on the grass, obviously, just to make it look a bit exciting. Okay. Let's get to it. What is one degree? Well, it's actually simple. One degree is derived from 60 minutes. 60 minutes, remember that. One degree is equivalent to 60 minutes. The same can be said for one degree is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. Because one degree, 60 minutes, one degree is also in seconds because it's time. So in other words, 360 degrees that would be the fur the full uh, circumference would equals 1440 minutes 1440 minutes or 24 hours which makes a day is to travel at 360 degrees so in other words a full time lapse of a day 24 hours it can the star would travel 360 degrees around that circumference but the problem is we only observe 180 degrees from us. Where have you ever gone and actually taken an observation more than 180 degrees? You can't because you're literally standing on a horizontal plane. The horizontal plane is 180 degrees. So we only ever observe 180 degrees from us. 180 degrees equals 720 minutes. Remember, the degrees are in minutes. It's not distance. Now, 180 degrees equals 12 hours. Because it's time, it just shows it's 12 hours. So in other words, in 12 hours, that star or sun or whatever moves 180 degrees. This means the maximum distance to view is 180 degrees. Now we times that by 60. Remember, 180 is timing by 60 minutes. Now by 60 minutes, so it can actually so it gives a relationship to actual distance because it's traveled through that time. So in other words, the travel time that, that the 180 degrees would be travel distance time of 10,800 nautical miles. One thing you have to note that 10,800 nautical miles would be a 180 degree of a full 360 degree circumference. Very interesting. And that is all we can observe. We do not observe more than that because we cannot observe underneath our feet. People taking 360 degree measurements is just, it's just circular reasoning and it's begging the question that there is 360 degrees to, uh, to work out. So what does this tell us? We only ever observe from a 90 degree angle, which is so true. When last have you ever seen anybody go and take an angular measurement that's not from a 90 degree? Your zenith is always at 90 degrees. So that means you only have one quadrant of measurement, which is 90 degrees. So 90 degrees, which equals to six hours, 90 times 60 minutes, remember, equals 5,400 nautical miles. Hmm. That means the maximum distance you can ever measure a co-altitude angle is 5,400 nautical miles. That 
totally validates that you're only measuring a quadrant of a circumference. So in other words, let's say Polaris to the equator, 5,400 nautical miles. Remember, it's still based on a flat horizontal plane. Let's go and explain to you how the minutes work now, because it's simply not how you would interpret it as distance. Like I'm trying to explain, it's not actually distance. This distance is equivalent to the time that it's spent traveling across the ground. So remember, we're measuring the arc in the sky. We're measuring a 90 degree to a zero. So we're measuring that arc around. Let's take, for instance, this clock. You know how a clock works, obviously. In the case of an arc, you see that arc around, one degree has been divided into 60 minutes. It means degrees, every degree means 60 minutes. We know that a clock arm movement rotates around the circumference of the clock two times every 24 hours. So in other words, the clock goes around, do 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 do, and it's reached one cycle. That means it's halfway through the day. It's got to go through again, do 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 do, and it reaches again for obviously for AM and PM. That means that 360 degrees times two equals 720 degrees. A clock is built with 12 partitions. So for a single partition, we witness one degree which is equal to 720. Now you divide that tw by 12 and it equals 60 minutes. So that is how one degree equals to 60 minutes. Very simple. So that just validates that it's just the time of the arc. That's why we measure in minutes of arc, degrees. Okay, back to the illustration. This is just simply Mike standing here on his quadrant. This is a half a circumference, so 180 degrees, which is the only way we can measure in reality. Obviously, if we put the ground further, because his field of view is limited to that 5,400 nautical miles. Well, obviously, 5,000, 5,000, so it makes it 10,800. What we can only measure is pi, which is equivalent to 180 degrees. That's a half a circumference. That's all we can observe in reality. If you have to add the rest of the circumference, that's just you making an assumption that it's got a full circumference, isn't it? Because you cannot observe that. Simply, if the luminary gets to zero degrees, so it's at its limited angle. That is why you cannot go and view it anymore. That's why you can't view it anymore. It's got, the angle has got too acute to view. So we take it, he's standing at the 90 with 180 degrees. So what do we see? We simply see these quadrants. Mike is standing measuring his 90 degree quadrant. Obviously, he doesn't have eyes in his back to measure behind him. If he's holding a sextant, he's measuring on his 90 degree quadrant. So that we would know, it has this arc. This arc in the sky is what you are measuring. This is where the stars and the sun and the moon or whatever you're measuring in the sky is following this arc. This arc is simply due to perspective. It's not actually arcing. This is what they call the celestial sphere. This is the measurement you're making, not the measurement on the ground. This is the measurement. The linear function based on this arc from the horizontal is why you get the measurement you do. So you're standing at 90, on a flat horizontal plane and he's taking an angular measurement to the star. Funny enough, this one made 66 degrees. So we see Mike's GP of 90 is on the same reference plane, which is horizontal to the GP of the star, which follows the arc. So its co-altitude angle would be 33. How do we get that? It's simply taking the 90 degrees measuring the 66 degrees that he measured and you get your alco altitude angle of 33 so that means his distance because he's at 33 degrees would be 33 times 60 and that should get your nautical miles distance let's add another one okay now he measured another one 
at 18 degrees. Remember, the lower the degree, the further, the further the distance. So in other words, if he just stood still and he didn't move and this was the same star, this star would be taking time do, 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 to get there. It's following that visual arc. That is the measurements he's making. Mike doesn't even have to move. He can just stand in exactly the same place and watch the star move down into the apparent horizon because it's following the laws of perspective and that's why it's having the apparent going down over a curve. So it took time for it to get there and that's why the distance and the altitude has changed. This is only possible on a flat baseline. Have you noticed we have not used a curved baseline once? We have not moved this, we have not moved this angle and moved it to a center of earth to get your radii. We have not moved it to get your distance. We simply use triangles on a flat baseline. This is what I'm trying to explain. When you measure to the sky, you're measuring minutes of arc on that arc. So in other words, every degree, the stars are moving over that arc. That's why you're measuring minute of arc, degrees, latitudes and longitudes. The whole grid system is based on this principle. It's based on the movements of the luminaries, not the curve beneath your feet. The distances are derived from minutes of arc. And while well, I think I've made it very clear to you, well, I think I've made it very clear to you. If you have any questions, please don't feel shy to let me know down below in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to try answer them. And well, I hope I've made it very clear and obvious to you how it's derived and what minute of arc is and how you get your 60 nautical miles per degree. It's not because of a globe. It's simply measured on a fat baseline. So if the globers ever want to come and argue again with you, 60 nautical miles means globe. Show them this video. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Don't forget to subscribe. Till next time. God bless.